what is your priority list as you're going through postseason scouting right now? I mean, there's only so much time. People have jobs. People only have, you know, a day here, a day there. What's your priority list? Um, right now, what basically how my postseason scout is now, I mean, we all do our cyber scout and stuff like that. And that's how I generally start, like, like say next Saturday. I'm, I'm Every Saturday, I'm pretty much how my schedule is. I'm in a woods for postseason scouting. Mm-hmm. I'll typically start midweek, and I like to go back to areas I've already been in. I've always go back to areas, especially that I've I've either got some really good uh, camera data over the years. I've just let camera soak. I'll go back in there and try to break those areas down. Or, like I said, when I'm going to a new spot, I start doing my cyber scout midweek, kind of pick an area out, and that's kind of where I head for the, the, the you know that weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, what I'm always looking for is is that. Uh, you know, your clear cuts, some type of cover. If you can see that transition line or something like that, I'm always trying to look. And that's where I end up starting. Um, but for whatever reason, that's just start. That's not where I end up. And I always – the places I find are never on a map, yeah. it, to be honest with you. It, it, it seems like you start there, either there's too much hunting pressure or something like that, and I start to branch off of that and just follow some things and then end up mm-hmm. getting in areas that – a lot of things are coming together that, that I'm looking for. So what are some things that people should be looking for that aren't on the map, but when you look at it and you're walking, you're like, oh, I need to make a note of this. And yeah, that, it might know, be obvious for a lot of people, but for some Yeah, I not. mean, sign's a big thing. You read your sign, you rub your scrapes and all that, and sometimes the best location is where the sign is. But a lot of times you'll notice what I pick up on, especially in a state like where I hunt PEA, is that's where the pressure is. Everybody can see a big rub, big scrape, something like that. Sometimes you want to come off of that. A lot of times I hunt off that sign. It could be a couple hundred yards, quarter mile. That's where I like to get into like a, a funnel or a terrain feature or something. You know, either it's either the funnels made by the terrain or habitat feature where a couple things are coming together mm-hmm. and that location off of that sign where gives me an opportunity to kill something. That's some of my best spots what I'm looking for mm-hmm. is something that's overlooked. You sure. know what I mean? It could be simple. It could just be, it could be just, a, just a ditch crossing, something simple. You know, that stuff's not going to show up on a map unless you put mm-hmm. boots on the ground. Yeah. Yep. How many miles do you think you cover in a postseason scouting? Uh, last year, I put just postseason scouting was 100. Um, this year, I'm trying between 150 and 200 is my goal. Ooh, One, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to – I bet 50 right now because I killed early, come back from high, I kind of already started. Yeah. So, I think I got about 50 miles in. But here with the snow comes off, I'll put in probably – I tried between 8 and 12 miles on a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, maybe I'll go on a Sunday also and try to really rack it up. So uh, that's key. It's like for my hunting style, and when, I think when you're a, a rut hunter per se, yeah, the postseason scouting is really, really important because I need to see, read that sign and come off of that sign. Yeah, you know, that's what John Eberhart lives and dies by. Yeah, and yeah. He's a he's yeah. a self-proclaimed rut right. hunter. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in your postseason scouting, um, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of guys that will kind of shift their attention right now to like shed season yeah and picking up sheds yeah. i mean are you doing any of that and if, if you yeah, are i mean i love that? shed hunting um i separate the two yep typically yeah. what i do is i mean if i'm scouting yes i find sheds if i'm shedding right i run into great spots right um basically what i do is i don't like to shed until maybe like the last week of february that first week in march and i'll just like take two weekends like a saturday and sunday mm-hmm. and shed hunt and i just Put in 20 Special miles, wherever it just – I'll cherry pick areas, go in, shed hunt. And then after that, if I pick them up, I pick them up. If in an area you're hunting, you see it looks pretty good for a shed, I'll slow down for 10, 15 mm-hmm. minutes to look. Um, but I try to separate a few. To me, it's it's a visual thing. Yes. I'm looking at two different spectrums of, yep. the, of the terrain and habitat, you know. Yep. Totally agree with that. So, yep. of the 100 miles you cover, 150 miles in a, a year postseason scouting, how many spots do you find to quantify it? I mean – I'm always looking for big scrapes, big primary scrapes for the cameras. Yeah. Um, if I'm in a new area, um, I may find a half a dozen, yeah. you know, give or take. But because I'm always looking for like a kind of a big, per, a big primary scrape in some type of habitat terrain feature to where I can hang a camera, mm-hmm. because I can't hunt all those spots. So basically, what I do is I'll hang a camera and let those cameras soak for a year. Mm-hmm. Then if I get one or two or three, whatever, mature bucks, then that's when I start to slide and hunt a lot of those areas. That's kind of how I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's it, – they're, they're, I mean, typically I find a solid spot every time out. It, you, it seems something decent, yeah. um, but that place that just screams, it, you only get a handful of it, it seems, maybe a year, you yeah. know. But but that adds up. You do that for 10 years. Then you have. And then you, you start to ha- – then you yeah. can that, – that's where your cameras come into right. play. You get the certain box in area you're looking for, the quality – then you just slip in and put your time in. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more because there's 
those outlier spots too yeah. that are just really good. Yeah. I don't walk 100 miles postseason scouting. Yeah. But it's about one every two years I find when it's yeah, like, yeah. oh my gosh, that's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It's it's it always seems uh, I've joked to this before. You might put 10 miles in. It's like at mile 9.8, it's like you find the son of a gun. It's like, you got to be kidding me. You know, you finally find yeah. it all day, you know, because it can get frustrating sometimes. And I think what a lot of times, too, especially like I've been transitioning to big woods, mountain type stuff, 90 plus percent of it just walk. It's nothing. You can say you just walk through it. You're finding those little 5, 10% pockets. You're looking through through thousands of acres. That's what you're trying to find, you yeah. know, where the deer are concentrating at. Yeah. If you had to uh, quantify or put a number on, how many cameras you're kind of allocating for those long term strategies? Yeah, you know, let them put them out, let them soak. Like percentage wise, what is what is that? I like? mean, I think I've I've said this before. I don't know what the number I put on, but over half is going to be for long term. Um, you know, say I've, this year I ran thirty cameras. I, I mean, I really don't check a lot of cameras during the season. Mm-hmm. You know, I have some cell cams up. I think they, they kind of do their job for the in season. Um, but say out of thirty, I mean, roughly maybe I'd say good portion of those sixty seventy plus percent are going to be i don't check them i put them out i may check them once in october but a lot of times a lot of times i don't check those i put them out in july i'll check them in the summer see what velvet bucks on see if the area is holding the quality and i just let them run yeah and then i come back in either right after bow season or like now january february if i get around to them like i have five down a high right now they've been down there you know since july you know i'll check those mm-hmm. so doing this or going through that process it seems like several years over now. Is there anything that you've picked up on, like from the ca- on on the camera end, that people yeah. would find surprising or interesting? I you you uh, you know if you read too many magazines, you watch too many uh, celebrity TV shows, um, and I and I fell into this trap. I'm a rut hunter, pre rut. Last week of October into November, what I've picked up over the last two or three years with the cameras is surprised how many big mature bucks daylight early to mid October. It is insane. I mean. There's some guys like Jake Bush, some other guys have mastered that. And I see this on these big scrapes, especially right off the bedding. They're up on their feet. I'm talking an hour plus before dark. These bucks are like nothing. I cannot believe the the information I've gained over the last couple of years. Um, and I plan on utilizing it this upcoming year now because I'm, I, you know, me and my dad here, we go out, we hunt, you know, October, just kind of eh, whatever, you know, maybe kill a doe. You're not really putting anything into it, really. Now I'm learning. You got you hunt hard in October in these areas. You can consistently kill big bucks. I'm really surprised at daylight activity I have on scrapes. Really That's interesting. Yeah, and those are those marquee community scrapes. Yeah, like those and scouting. this year, like I, you know, the first week of October second, third, I had a couple big bucks, but uh, days that stood out uh, October 13th, 16th, 19th, and I think the 21st, um, the 16th especially, I had multiple big bucks on scrapes. Um, looking at weather, there was some like. Uh, normal to upper temperatures and some temp you know cold front come in that had them up and moving um some didn't some were just warm and they were doing daylighting yeah. i'd have them for a couple of weeks um but i noticed a lot around the cold fronts you know yeah they were hitting them straights pretty good mm-hmm. yeah it was really interesting to see 